But now it's time for Paper Talk. Coming up, we'll take a close look at the sports pages to see what's making the headlines. And two superb guests this morning. We've got broadcaster Sophie Nicolau from the Highbury squad and the Athletics. David Ornstein, welcome to both of you. <laughs> Thanks for that, Sophie. We're going to get straight to the World Cup because it's only 17 days until England start their campaign. Loads of injury concerns for Gareth Southgate and Chief Sports writer Martin Samuel hasn't held back in his column. That's in the Daily Mail. Right, David, what's the main theme of this article? Well, Tom, he takes FIFA to town for the organization of this tournament. We've talked about so many issues from uh, human rights, LBGTQ plus issues, women's rights, uh, the stadium being moved from the summer towards the winter, um, and the disruption to the season. But what about the disruption to players? They seem to be dropping like flies. Some of the language used in Martin Samuel's piece is really strong about this issue. Um, they're going to have so little time to prepare for this tournament. Uh, there have been no warm-up matches. Some of the biggest names in world football are suffering from injuries. And it could be to the detriment of a tournament that many feel should never have been awarded to Qatar. The uh, article then goes on to talk about the that so many players should plan for their country, such as Argentina, Brazil, South American nations in particular, and whether that's going to be on their minds heading into the final rounds of domestic Fixtures. We've seen the Argentine National FA request a Premier League and they rest their Argentine players. I don't think that has uh, gone down too well with the Premier League managers, who of course have their own priorities. Um, so this is going to be a really delicate issue in the days and couple of weeks ahead before the tournament kicks off in Doha. It's incredible, isn't it, that this World Cup was awarded 10 years ago and there are articles and videos popping up everywhere now regarding the issues that many people have pointed out of concern. The Australia team has done a video pertaining to the human rights. Where was that video five years ago, 10 years ago? Where have all these articles been on a daily basis? It just seems like panic stations have hit in. And it's not that the article isn't spot on in many ways. Uh, it's just that perhaps some of these issues should have been brought to the table a long time ago. Um, it's fans who are paying the price uh, once again. And also, you're asking the Premier League to adhere to a tournament which no one really wanted to take place at this point and at this juncture in the schedule. So it seems, David, as well, that perhaps a lot of these issues could have been ironed out a long time ago. It's important that we mm. write about them still, but it just seems a little too late. Good point. So it's almost as if everybody thought that, oh, this World Cup won't really happen. Eventually it'll change. And it, and it hasn't happened. But, Sophie, in terms of the injury woes, it's not just England, is it? No. I mean, France have uh, terrible injuries, Pogba. Although, uh, you know, not to be cute here at all, uh, Pogba hasn't really featured for Juventus since he signed. So I think that they've been able to, you know, plan ahead without him. Angolo Kante is a huge miss. Uh, Kamara. Um, looks like he's going to miss the World Cup as well. And it's not just France as well. You've got Jota, you've got Neto, Angel Di Maria potentially missing the World Cup, Dybala missing the World Cup. So there's lots of injuries. And I, I, I think that we've seen this before with the summer. And I, I hear this argument about the timing of this, but there are injuries where England have missed out, you know, with Beckham and Rooney um, for a summer World Cup too. And that's just the nature of football. But everyone is experiencing these issues. Of course, Son now... Um, looks like somebody who it's touch and go. Uh, Richarlison might be back. So every single nation is uh, is suffering some type of, you know, um, injury and losing major players here. Well, let's stay with that same theme of the World Cup and, and, and going back to England because this headline, crocked, out of form, out of position, Gareth's frail defence. That's the headline from Henley Winter's article in The Times. And there's a picture of Ben Chilwell uh, there too. So, D David, give us a bit more detail about this column. Yeah, it's a really stark piece because Henry begins by going across the back line talking about Rhys James, Carl Walker, John Stones, Harry Maguire, Ben Chilwell. That could form a fantastic defence in normal circumstances, although Luke Shaw will most likely start at left back. And of course, Kieran Trippier has been in good form and fitness this season, but it brings it home how much of a struggle Gareth Southgate has on his hands defensively because of these injuries. I would point out that Ben Chilwell hasn't really featured much under Gareth Southgate. He didn't play a minute at the Euros, um, but of course it's a blow. Also, Henry points out that uh, perhaps he should have been 
uh, cared for a little bit more diligently by Graham Potter uh, with Mark Cucurella available. But I think many people would turn around and say England players need game time. Somebody like Ben Chilwell, who's had injury problems on the in the past, might like to play himself into form. So it's a bit of a impossible situation for an international manager at the moment. What Henry does allude to is England's strength and fitness in midfield and attack at the moment. Fingers crossed, because that may change in, in the next fortnight. But um, in terms of Jude Bellingham, Declan Rice, Phil Foden, Harry Kane, Bakayo Saka, uh, who, who looks to be fit, um, Mason Mount and others. So perhaps that will accentuate the need or the desire of the nation to see Gareth Southgate play a really progressive um, front foot style of football when that tournament begins. And maybe it will be a blessing in disguise. It's, uh, I think it smacks of the lack of versatility, perhaps, that Gareth Southgate has as a manager in terms of being able to deal uh, deal with uh, injuries and what is his plan B. I, I also think, and I love Henry's work and, and I'm a huge fan, but it just feels like a bit, not whiny, but England have a lot of talent. And like we've just rattled off a bunch of names of players who are going to be injured for this World Cup, England also have depth and they have versatility. Like Saka is versatile. He can play a variety of positions. Um, you, you know, uh, you have Kieran Trippier, who's found form. Uh, there's uh, there's Luke Shaw, who's kind of found his form again for, um, for Manchester United. The forgotten man, Trent Alexander-Arnold, uh, is someone who's proven himself at that level. So, yes, there are challenges and, yes, there are injuries, but also Gareth Southgate has to figure this out. This is the tournament for him to really, really make a further mark as England manager and take this team a little bit further, and he has to be able to adapt, which is something that we didn't see him do in the Euro final against Italy. I love that you two have brought some positivity to this, and we're going to continue it right now because Callum Wilson's been interviewed by The Sun and plenty of others, and it says, in form, robust and ready. That's their take on the Newcastle striker. And in the right-hand corner, it says, though, you know, bringing it down a little bit, says, at least someone is. All right, David, uh, what's the theme of this Wilson interview? Well, he's not backwards in coming forwards, Tom, is he? He's very much heart on the sleeve. He wants to go to that World Cup and he's going to say it. But it's not just words, there's actions as well. He's got a better goals per minute ratio, I think, than Harry Kane this season. Is it six plus two assists as well? Um, Gareth Southgate was watching Newcastle's match against Villa from the stands at St. James's Park. We understand that he spoke to Amanda Staveley, the Newcastle co-owner, afterwards, and that Callum Wilson was mentioned. So certainly he's in the mix. I think he's in that 55-man long list. And he appears to be proving his fitness at the moment as well. So if you're looking at informed strikers um, of an English variety, yeah, you look at Tammy Abraham, of course, uh, has been in the mix in recent times. Ivan Tony was in the last squad but didn't play a minute. But really, it's Wilson. He's got a lot of goodwill behind him. He knows about it and he's going to speak about it, even if that comes across to some people as being arrogant. I think Callum Wilson is a real character. He's a really good player. Newcastle value him. I reported recently that they've just tied him down to a new contract that yet to, is yet to be announced. And one of the reasons for that is not just his playing ability, but his personality, his influence in the dressing room around the club. And I think that's something that Gareth Southgate prioritises as well. The group, which will be crucial out in Qatar, like it is at any major tournament. So I think this interview, yeah, firmly uh, pins his colours to the mast. He wants to be in that England squad for Qatar and we'll find out next week. Yeah, just to add, he's been a revelation this season and a breath mm -hmm. of fresh air. And his story is one of the best stories so far in the Premier League. You know, Newcastle United have come under fire a little bit uh, because of their ownership. But when you look at the, the team that Eddie Howe's put together and you look at what is happening on the pitch only, you know, they have been a joy to watch. And Callum Wilson, I like that he's been vocal. A lot, oftentimes we talk about players perhaps not being as candid in interviews and we want them to give a little bit more. And I think the modern day player is willing to go that extra mile and do that and put themselves out there. And um, I'm rooting for him. You, you know, David mentioned some of these other players. Calvert-Lewin, you could add to that. You can see the difference that he made to Everton on his return from injury. But Callum Wilson is the hot player right now. And Gareth Southgate, again, needs to adapt because he picks his favourite, but also going into tournament play. 
You need those hot players who are playing full of confidence, and he's definitely one of those. Yeah, I'm, I'm biased. I like it when players have come through the leagues. When we look at Callum Wilson, Coventry there, loans to Kettering Town and Tamworth before that move to Bournemouth. Get him on the plane, definitely. Right, we're going to end in the mirror, and Virgil van Dijk is showing a lot of love for Kevin De Bruyne, saying if the Manchester City midfielder had been at Liverpool, they would have won even more. Uh, so a lot of praise there, Sophie. What else has van Dijk had to say about De Bruyne? Yeah, he, he talked about, you know, how good he is on the ball, versatile, what a world-class player that he is. And I love that quote where he said, you know, if he was playing for Liverpool, we would have won more. Well, if he was playing for most teams, they would win more. He's such a super classy player. And it's interesting to see Van Dijk heap praise on a competitor. They've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe Manchester City and Liverpool over the last few seasons. And, you know, it's been epic to watch those battles, a newfound rivalry in the Premier League. But yeah, he's super complimentary and uh, and would have loved to have had him as a teammate uh, at Liverpool. But they're also really good friends and that's quite rare to see at this level, but also uh, of teams who are such fierce rivals at this moment in time. I think they were featured on holiday together. They live very close to each other. Maybe their kids go to the same school. And I think that's lovely to see two guys at the top of their game. But De Bruyne really is one of the standout performers of this generation, uh, arguably the most creative attacking midfielder we're, we're seeing in world football right now. Um, uh, he's inspired Manchester City. Will he inspire Belgium to the same level? I think that's going to be a really interesting one, uh, they've not managed to fulfill their potential yet at, on the world stage, that sort of golden generation. But De Bruyne has the class, the quality, the composure, that winning mentality. He really, really hates losing, and you see it in him. <laughs> and I think Van Dijk has noticed that, and um, it's lovely to see that mutual respect. Uh, he's a class act, Kevin De Bruyne. I love him, and I think, as Sophie says, yeah. he would improve any team he would lead them to uh, major honors and he's doing that at man city but let's see if he will with belgium too performers and class acts that's you too sophie david thank you see you soon <laughs> thanks guys see you, Tom.